Hi everybody, my name is Mr Barlow and welcome to episode 14 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 2, Area of Study 1, and I'll be talking about plant tropisms and the way that hormones control the growth and general development of plants. So this episode is all about plants, and plants actually lead a very tough life. They have to grow wherever a seed germinates. So if it's rainy or windy or hot or cold, they can't go anywhere. They just have to stay exactly where they are. And as a result, they've evolved to deal with a great variety of environmental conditions. And in fact, the environment also provides many cues to a plant's growth and development. Now, plant growth and development is actually controlled by a bunch of hormones. So, hormones are little chemical messengers and they transport signals from one area of a multicellular organism, so from basically from one cell to another cell in a multicellular organism. Now, plants don't actually have many hormones and they're really not as highly specific as animal hormones are. In fact, plants don't have endocrine glands um, and endocrine glands are basically glands, certainly in and mammals, which produce hormones. So plants don't have them, but in plants, hormones are produced in cells, and the cells produce hormones depending on the type of environmental stimuli that the cell has received. So in flowering plants, hormones actually control the growth of roots, the growth of stems and leaves, the timing of flowering, fruit ripening, the timing of seed germination. So in reality, the whole bunch, the whole organism's growth and development is controlled by hormones in plants. So in talking about the way that plants grow, develop and respond to their environment, uh, it's important to talk about the word tropism. So a plant tropism is a response in which the direction of the response is related to the direction from which the stimulus comes. And it may be positive, so the plant might move in, into the, the same direction as the stimulus, or it might be negative, so the plant might move in the opposite way to you know, the direction of the stimulus. And in fact, tropisms are also controlled by plant hormones. So I'm going to give you quite a few examples of plant tropisms. So the first example is phototropism. And that's when plants grow in response to light. So photo you know, is light, and tropism is growth in response to. So there's positive phototropism, and positive phototropism is when a plant grows towards the light. Um, and in fact, normally plants show positive phototropism. Another example of a tropism in plants is geotropism. So geotropism is when plants grow in response to gravity. So in fact, positive geotropism is when plants grow down. So the roots of plants grow down into the ground. They're positively geotropic. And the stems of plants are negatively geotropic, so that means they grow away from gravity or they grow upwards. So geotropism is a plant movement in response to gravity. And the last tropism I'll use as an example is thigmotropism. And thigmotropism is the growth of a plant in response to touch. So a good example of that is if a vine is growing up or near a tree, it'll grow around a tree because if some vines touch a tree, um, they then grow in that direction. So by touching the tree, the vine ends up growing around the tree in this big you know, spiral. So that's thigmotropism, or you know, growth of a plant in response to touch. So I've mentioned plant hormones quite a number of times in this episode, and there are actually five main groups of plant hormones. There's auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, abscisic acid, and ethylene. So I'll go through all five of them just very briefly. So auxins are responsible for phototropism uh, and the way that happens is the cells that are furthest from the light source they get longer in um, phototropism and those cells getting longer results in the shoot tip bending towards the light. So auxins basically um, move towards the dark side of the cell and make those cells grow longer to make the plant bend. Auxins are also uh, involved in geotropism, so um, making roots grow down and shoots growing up. And uh, auxins are also responsible for apical dominance. 
An apical dominance is when one stem grows bigger and stronger. So one stem is dominant over the rest in a plant. So oxen kind of restricts lateral growth of the plant in favor of one stronger, bigger stem. So, you know, you get one big stem strong and basically that stem ends up being the trunk of the plant. So the second group of plant hormones is gibberellins and they promote cell elongation and basically the growth of the entire plant. They're also responsible for um, seed germination, flowering and fruit enlargement. So that's uh, gibberellins. Now the third group is cytokinins. So with auxin, cytokinins are responsible for cell division and cell differentiation. So, you know, which is basically um, making different types of cells. So basically, if you've got more, if a cell's got more cytokinin than auxin, stems and leaves grow. And if you've got more auxin than cytokinin in a cell, roots grow. So you get different types of plant cells depending on how much of each hormone is in the cell. The fourth group of plant hormone is abscisic acid. So that's a growth inhibiting hormone. So abscisic acid is responsible for the dropping of fruit um, when you know, fruit's ripe and the dropping of leaves in autumn. Uh, it's also responsible for, or it, it controls the opening and the closing of stomata. So the uh, holes in the leaves of plant that control gas exchange. Uh, so that's uh, abscisic acid. Now the last group of plant uh, hormones is ethylene. So ethylene's a, a gas and it results in fruit ripening. So it increases cellular respiration and converts starch and oil into sugar. So when we eat fruit, we want it to be ripe uh, and ethylene is the hormone which is responsible for that. You may have heard about um, a way to ripen fruit. And basically the way to do that is to put fruit which is not ripe or fruit, fruit you want to get ripe into a bag of really ripe bananas and the reason the ripe bananas ripen other fruit is basically ripe bananas are producing lots of ethylene gas this eth ethylene gas will then you know diffuse into the other fruits and help ripen them a little bit so yeah that's a summary of the five groups of plant hormones auxins gibberellins cytokinins abscisic acid and ethylene Now if you look at a plant, you would think that it doesn't really do much, but they actually respond to their environment quite a bit. So for example, you know, they respond to the amount of light in their environment, and I've already talked about phototropism and the way that plants grow towards the light. But plants also respond to the amount of light and the amount of dark. So for example, the amount of light and dark um, affects the way that a plant flowers. So for example, short day plants require really long periods of darkness, so long nights, to flower. So short day plants would flower in, um, you know, kind of autumn or winter. And then there are other plants called long day plants, and they flower if the nights are really short. So long day plants flower if there's a short period of darkness every day. So that means that these plants generally flower during um, late spring or early summer. So, you know, in terms of plants responding to their environment, we've already talked about the way that plants respond to gravity, uh, so that's geotropism. We've already talked about the way that touch affects the way plants grow, again, that's thigmotropism. Plants do other things, like, basically, when it gets to night time, they do different things at night. For example, their flower petals uh, will close at night, and the stomata of a plant will close at night and stomatal closing results from the turga of the guard cells surrounding stomata. So they're the cells which control the opening and closing of stomata. So they'll close uh, at night so plants won't lose any water. Another thing that plants do to respond to the environment is something called solar tracking. So that's basically leaves or flowers turning to face you know, the light or the sun. So you can actually illustrate solar tracking. So uh, if you've got a pot plant and you put it facing the sun, the leaves over you know, a day or two, the leaves will point towards the sun. But then if you turn it around so the leaves are facing away from the sun and then leave it for a bit and come back you know, a day later, you'll find that the leaves have turned again to face the sun. 
Uh, another good example of this is sunflowers. Um, you know, throughout one single day, a, a, a sunflower, the face of the flower, will basically follow the sun from when it um, rises all the way to when it sets. Uh, and another example of the way that uh, plants respond to their environment uh, is, for example, when a seedling starts growing, the shoot will kind of nod its head um, from one side to the other, which helps it push dirt out of the way to get to the surface um, so that it can photosynthesize. And some plants also do these contractile movements, which is kind of like a bit of a digging um, movement, and this can help some roots get deeper into the soil. Uh, some plants also do really fast responses. So, you know, all those responses I've talked about, they're pretty slow. But some plants, for example, the Venus flytrap, can trap insects, and it does it by doing these really, really fast movements. Plants can actually also respond to the temperature of their environment. So, for example, vernalization is when a plant grows in response to a period of really cold temperature. So an example of uh, vernalization is sometimes seeds won't grow or you know won't germinate until they've been cold for a number of number of months. So what happens then is seeds will grow after the cold's finished finished. So that's really good because the seeds will grow after winter's finished. So they'll start to grow in spring, which is a really great time for a plant to grow. You know, it's nice and sunny and a bit of rain. Uh, and that's an example of, yeah, vernalization and another type of plant response to its environment. So that brings episode 14 of the VCE Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks for listening.